Hello everyone, welcome back. We are on a new kind of topic. I'm really interested in Kenny Veach and the mysterious M cave that he found and then tried to find again and then just vanished. Uh, I personally uh, have lived in Las Vegas for two years and I actually visited Mount Charleston right there and I had no idea that, I mean, th this was going on. I mean, I lived there in like 20, 20, uh, 2002, 2000, the year 2000 and 2002. So this was like, this is 14 and 12 years after this person uh, found this cave. Um, and it's just, uh, let's see, my experience uh, from Mount Charleston is a little bit different than what this area is. This is a little bit more deserty, more dry. That Mount Charleston that I went to, um, it had a higher peak, I think a higher elevation. And uh, there were some times where, you know, you can live in, in Las Vegas and then go up there and see some snow. But over in this area, this is a little bit more arid, a little bit more dry. Um, there's mine shafts everywhere, like that circle thing there. There's caves everywhere, and uh, this is just all from uh, the video I saw from Kenny Beach. This is a pretty interesting story. Um, of course, anything close to Area 51 to me is pretty interesting. And uh, Area 51 is, I mean, it's not close, but it's it's not very far either. It's just a bit further up north. But we're just going to focus on this one area right here. We're going to follow this person's path that he took to find this mysterious cave that he just didn't feel right about. He said it made his whole body vibrate. And so he, yeah, he, I, I don't know if he called it Mysterious M Cave or if everyone else on YouTube has called it the Mysterious M, M Cave. But. Yeah, um, we're going to use that helicopter, and we're going to take off from the uh, the same airport that the rescue helicopter took off at to try and l look for him. Only a cell phone was found at the entrance of an abandoned mine shaft. Uh, of course, his vehicle was found, but that's it. So... He has hiked throughout this whole area. Um, he's been a hiker his whole life, so, uh, or at least his adult life. And uh, yeah, let's get right to it. Uh, you'll see later on too. This is a huge gun range. I'm gonna fly over. We're gonna we're gonna take this path and, and fly over it. But this is just massive. It's like the size of an of of a t it could be the size of a town. Because I mean, look how big that is compared to. I mean, that's like 10% size or any, or ooh, maybe like 5%, but still, that's a huge gun range. Uh, all right, yeah, let's get to it. Enough yapping. Let's get to flying. Okay, let's get this bird in the air, and let's get to the information. Um, first of all, we are in a Bell 407 helicopter. Uh, this is the type of rescue helicopter that is used for, or the type of helicopter used for rescues and searches. The dispatch center is probably about two miles away from this uh, airport. So now let's look into who we are looking for. That would be this person by the name of Kenny Veach, aged 47, and he is a white male, medium height. What happened? 
because a missing persons report got filed. And we are en route. Where at? That would be good to know. Somewhere in the Desert National Wildlife Range. Great. A, at least it's between Las Vegas and Area 51, so awesome. That helps. And when was this? November 10th, 2014. So no rush. Why? Uh, he said he was on a solo three-day hike. And that's not simply the only reason why we're going to spend all this money to rent this helicopter, is it? Just to retrace steps of someone who went on a solo three-day hike? Well, it is a pretty big area to uh, search. There's Red Rocks there, Death, uh, Death Valley way over there. That's Area 51 up top. Uh, S4 is below it. The gun range, or well, the firing range is right there, where the X marks the spot, and we'll be doing the blue circle. The green shows a lot of the paths that he's hiked, and then, but we're focusing where the red arrow is pointing at. So he has, I'm sure he's been to uh, the first two places too. Um, he's uh, an experienced hiker from what we have gathered. Uh, he does not uh, fear any creature there. Um, he, he knows what to eat, what not to eat in case he ever gets um, hungry or runs out of food or gets lost. Um, Maybe if his vehicle were to break down, then he would know how to survive long enough in the desert um, and be aware enough to not, you know, take the wrong step somewhere or eat the wrong thing, uh, get the wrong uh, nutrients from the wrong kind of plant, something like that. So he is an avid hiker and the desert doesn't scare him at all. Um, He's not even a, a big YouTuber, actually, um, even even now, after all this uh, publicity. Uh, his channel is still pretty small as far as subscriptions are concerned. But that one video does have 2.8 million views of his uh, route that we'll be following. Um, he goes by the name of Snakebit McGee on YouTube. And uh, as you can see here, he is not afraid of the, I would say that's probably one of the most dangerous animals in the desert is a rattlesnake. Um, tell me if I'm wrong, you know, maybe bobcats might be too alarmed with something so big as us, but he was at home in the desert and he really enjoyed uh, the animals there, um, like tortoises and the, the, sh the mountain sheep. He f was almost like at home in the desert. He took many steps to uh, prepare himself for a trip like this. He would tell his family where he's at exactly, uh, the route he'd be taking. Sometimes he would record uh, where he was going and the route he took. But this this one time he just found uh, these these caves, this one cave that just gave him a bad vibe. I'm not sure if this is exactly it, but he did call it an M cave, and this was a screenshot from one of his videos. And uh, he said he found caves everywhere, but nothing was like this one. Like you see here, there are caves everywhere, but I don't even think that one that I showed you in the beginning was one of the ones he was looking for. Now uh, I know this channel primarily does a lot of mud flood research, and I think this actually kind of goes goes with it. I think everything's connected. We see a mountain with caves and we think it's it's melted buildings. So uh, that you know mining, you know, like that's where a lot of gold comes from is maybe there was an old building there and we just got to dig it up. So, you know, um, he he went to the desert often and he found caves often, but this one particular cave just gave him really bad vibe. It, it, he said it made his whole body vibrate. And uh, this is someone who I think actually pushes his body to the limit. He He's even told people, um, hey, I want to see how far I can go this fast or how long I can hike. 
and he'll even test himself. He'll, he'll put his body to the limit and he'll test himself and he'll only drink water when he'll pretend that he doesn't have any water. This is uh, Kenny Veach. Kenny will pretend like he just doesn't have any water and so he won't, he'll basically, you know, maybe dehydrate himself as, as far as he can last. Then he'll take a couple sips and then he'll just do that. And that's how, that's how he helps himself survive in the desert. Uh, stuff like that. Uh, he finds specific like nuts on the ground, like from a certain plant. Apparently they taste sweet and they sell for like $10 a bag or something like that. But uh, so this guy, he didn't get spooked by anything. And he said when he found this particular cave that it just spooked him and it made his whole body vibrate and he didn't feel like going in there because he didn't have his pistol with him. So he posted it on online and people kind of called him out and said, no, you're faking, you know, there's nothing there. You go back and prove it. And he goes, all right, fine. So that's what, uh, that's what his last video was. His last video was to try and prove to um, commenters that there was this mysterious cave there and he was going to film it. So all of this, I bet you're wondering, like, if you haven't heard this case before, you're probably wondering, okay, get to the point, you know, what's going on here? And, you know, I, I really, I heard about this missing person case, like, I mean, pr pretty close while it was happening. And actually, I know that as a fact because there's this movie, what made me put two and two together was I saw this movie and it came out in 2017. So this is just three years after the whole Kenny Veach thing. And it probably takes a year, you know, to uh, make these things. And it was probably, it probably took another year to, to write it out, you know. So it's a year to film and shoot and a year to write. I mean, I think that's like the standard is it takes like two, sometimes three years. I mean, of course, in certain circumstances, there's like people who have like this thing they've been writing for 10 years and it finally gets made. But in the grand scheme of things, these these movie producers, they just make shit up and they they get it out. You know, it takes them about a year to write it if, you know, if it's anything good. It takes them a year to write it, then a year to, to shoot, and then it's out that next year. So really, it takes about three years for this stuff to come out. And that just coincidentally happens right when he goes missing. So did some conspiracy nut uh, that was a movie producer... Or, or some, you know, writer, did they hear this story and then make this movie? Or did no one in this movie, did, did no one involved, maybe no one involved in the movie at all heard about this? And this is just the natural cycle, you know, where they kind of give us a little bit of truth hidden behind like a, a fictional title. And so... Yeah, the missing person case by itself, it's pretty interesting, right? I mean, this guy who is an avid desert hiker goes out in search for a mysterious cave and then just disappears. You would think, case closed, okay? Well, no body was found, only the phone was found, and only his truck was found. And that's it. <laughs> like, <laughs> just disappeared. And, you know, one can... All, all these other videos, all these other YouTube videos that talk about it and there's dude I mean there's like hundreds of Kenny of each videos but I don't think a single one does it the way that I'm doing it right here which is in the air flying from Las Vegas in the rescue chopper and that's just that's what I love about this it's you don't really understand how far these places are until you have to travel there you know Google Earth and Google Maps that's one thing you can be like oh wow yeah, that's that's out there, but like we've been flying in this chopper for like several minutes, and you know this thing goes pretty fast, and it's and we don't have to go down the roads. So just imagine how much longer it would take to drive out to come out here. So, anyways, uh, getting off subject, um, I just you know wanted to point out that. 
I mean, I'm not, I'm not cutting anything out. I'm not cutting down the time. This is like a true, uh, a, a true, you know, time frame of, of how it takes to get from, from Las Vegas to out here to search for this guy. So, um, anyways, back to that movie that was made in 2017, uh, it kind of just hit home. Once I saw it, I was like, holy crap, that's like the Kenny Veach missing thing. And the name of the movie is called Timeline. And it's a uh, professor or some teacher that tells his students, ah, I found this weird cave. You know, it's so cool, but I, I didn't want to go back until I had some, uh, some self-protection. And he, like, filmed it, too. Like, he, he filmed where he went, and his, he told his students where his path was, you know, all that stuff. Same thing as what Kenny Beach did. And so that's how they were able to trace his steps, because he went missing. Um, he, without a, same thing, found his truck and found his phone, but they couldn't find him. And, yeah, there was, like, mines and, you know, other things around and um, mine shafts and uh, caves and everything like that just like Kenny Beach and honestly the area it looked just like this area too I mean it's like it's almost like they were throwing it on our face like they could have they could have picked anywhere but no like they they picked a mine shaft and they picked it out in the desert out in Nevada <laughs> and this like once five things start you know coming together hitting the same thing it's like okay let's be on a coincidence you know they're trying to say something right um now in the movie it these kids they i think they find it i mean they definitely do find it uh and they kind of like go through to another dimension like it's like a like a mirror like a that turns liquidy like, like the Terminator, kind of. And, you know, you can kind of touch it. And, and your body vibrates, too. That's what the movie said. The movie said your body vibrates, just like what happened to Kenny Beach. And so the kid goes through. And, like, I don't know if he gets sucked through. I haven't seen it in a while. And usually I'm just watching movies while I'm doing some sort of artwork or something. So sometimes I miss, like, some scenes or whatever, but um, somehow one of the kids goes through to the other side, and then the friends go to, to, to help. So now all of them are stuck down there in this cave, and they're, like, why, they're just, like, trying to figure out a way to get out. But they're seeing, like, all this flashing up above, like, the hole they came from. And then they realized that the flashing they're seeing is the cycle of the sun and the moon going above their heads and it's it's like time is moving well I guess what uh, faster for them or is it slower is it like going way slower if if everything's moving super fast like like flashing like a like a flash of light um, going you know passing over the hole that they see and it's like happening a bunch of times so I think like years go by while they're just down there yeah that's what it is time is going really really slow for them and time is going way fast up there and um, I don't really remember what happens at the end so at least I, you know I'm not going to spoil the movie for y'all if you try to watch it but um, I don't know I think you can probably watch it for free on some subscriptions or something somewhere so, I guess with that said, who knows what he found? We'll never know. Um, all we can do is go based on, uh, you know, what what is what is factual as far as uh, what we're going to be doing today. Um, we are getting a little bit closer to the spot, and keep in mind, they. I mean. I think the, the name is a, it's a national reserve. So this whole area is a national, national reserve. And I don't know if anyone here is familiar with the f missing 411 cases by David Politis. But uh, I think those are super fascinating. 
and I will be doing a bunch of locations. I mean, I want to be doing uh, locations for Sasquatch, for missing people, for giants. There's this TikTok video that I saw of a, uh, uh, I don't know what kind of work he did, but it was up in uh, like, like the logging or something up in Canada, British Columbia. And there is like this this picture, I'm sure maybe some of y'all have seen it, of like this giant on the top of a mountain. It was all snowy. And so uh, I go visit places like that, but, you know, uh, this to me is like number one on the missing persons just because of the circumstances. The guy is a professional desert hiker. The documents that he found a mysterious cave is close to Area 51. There's a bunch of other caves around, and then he goes missing. So, um, <clears throat> we are getting very close to the location, and um, yeah. Uh, so, a couple other things. Apparently, uh, through some of his hikes over in this area, he was followed, or he saw like um, vehicles, kind of like looking for him or maybe not just him in particular but just scoping out who's walking around and uh, I don't know if you're aware but they have all kinds of like sensors and stuff around area 51 so that you can't get close without them knowing so who's to say that this particular mountain range didn't have some sensors around and they knew that there was somebody hiking there but we're gonna we're gonna pretty much land uh, very close to where he parked, and then we'll uh, we'll go out for a bird's eye view and uh, take a closer look at his path. But you can see how far <laughs> you can see how far this was out here. Um, this is the dirt road. Uh, there is a national park just down that back behind us. Um, there's another like little space where there's more people that, that, uh, travel there, go there. This is kind of a more secluded area from what he was saying, uh, before, before this, his video was put out, there's hardly anybody that ever walked up these areas, but apparently there was at one time because there's mine, there's mining going on and, um, I think I think I'd probably actually end up going here to visit if ever I had the chance to if ever I went back to Vegas and had a couple weeks to just you know look at everything I, I really didn't even know Red Rock was was so close I went to Mount Charleston like I said but I didn't know that Red Rock was on the other side of the of the range there but yeah he's hiked throughout all that mountain range he's hiked all through up here he said that he um He's camped up here before. I'm searching for his first landmark and it's pretty far up there. Okay, I see it now. Here is that mine shaft that he had pointed out in his video. And you can see this pretty much lines up exactly. He's parked way down there. And now we're going to go up. Apparently other YouTubers have gone and went down that mine shaft. But these are the pictures from uh, Kenny Beach's video. Yeah. Um, yeah, they said there, oh, there's nothing to it. Um, so, yeah, it is what it is, you know. Uh, um, I just wonder, you know, like, like, what the heck? 
uh, because he's vanished, and now, for, first of all, there was a search party that came and looked through all these caves. I mean, they didn't, they, these rescuers only go down where they feel they're not going to die, obviously. But I'm sure they'll send a flashlight down some places, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll do what they can, I guess. I mean, if someone fell down somewhere that was easily visible, you would, you would see them. So, he, he didn't die where there was any v visible traces that that happened. Just completely vanished. So that's where speculation run, runs wild. And, uh, you can kind of see where this little valley now um, goes down, but over there, um, I don't know if that's where I saw some weird stuff or not. I don't know if this is the test range. I don't think it is. I think the test range is a little bit more north. But uh, let's just take a look, see if there's anything weird over here. Sometimes you'll see some weird markings or something, but I don't think that's the one. Yeah, I think there's a different video that I make that has uh, some weird shapes and stuff on the flat bed. But here's definitely, a, I mean, this is above a bird's eye of the whole range. Um, you got Area 51 is that patch way back there. So you see, it's not very close. Uh, this, like I said, this is a national you know, wildlife range. So the government does run it, but it's like, um, you know, whenever I go, or like, I don't ever go, but if ever I go camping or something here in Texas, they got park rangers and stuff, but they're not really like on top of it, right? And then this is such a huge area. If he was over here camping and he wasn't supposed to be, like how the hell would anyone even know he was here? And this is down where he, this is further down where he went. This is where he said he found the M cave because he was trying to exit from his normal hike. And he came down this way and he said this is where he saw the M cave. It was just right in this area. He just didn't want to go in it. And then whenever he came back with a video camera, he just couldn't find it. He said it was on the ground level where he was walking. And you can just look in and he said it just goes far but then there was just just like wall of energy and then he just couldn't he just didn't feel right going inside there's some speculation that um, you know this could be a tunnel leading to area 51 or some military base or something like that and uh, that that's part of the defense or part of an alarm to let someone know, hey, there's someone there getting close to the mine, the secret mine shaft that leads to the underground base. All kinds of speculation because nobody ever found him. And this is where he would exit. And then his last hike uh, recorded over here was just, he would just walk along that edge and go all the way down to his truck. And that was his last, last video that he recorded and I don't know, maybe he did record his his path and maybe he did find the MK and recorded it. Maybe he went where, where he wasn't supposed to. All I know is that we will never know where Kenny Veach is.